everyone. Welcome back to Engineering Conversations. And today we have a female engineer with us and I'll ask her to introduce herself. Please go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth. I'm an electrical engineer and I work as a product applications engineer at Fundamentals where we provide products and services for the health and performance of the electrical grid. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that introduction. What inspired you into engineering? So as a child, I was interested in both sciences and English literature. I love to read novels, fantasy novels especially. So I didn't feel like I was forced to kind of go in a certain direction by my parents or by anyone. But I think one incident in particular sparked my interest, literally and figuratively. So one day my bedside lamp stopped working and for one reason or another, no one in the house could help me with it. So I opened up the plug with scissors and connected the wires with tape and uh, closed it back up again with the scissors and it worked. And after that, I was like, hey, I might be good at this if I applied myself. So I went on to study sciences and I had a great physics tutor who encouraged me to pursue electrical engineering in particular. And she's actually uh, a doctor of physics. And yeah, I went on to study electrical engineering, electrical and electronics engineering at university for my bachelor's degree. And I studied electrical power systems for my master's degree. That is lovely. Weren't you scared opening up that circuit for your bedside lamp? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, the fear hadn't factored in yet, but thankfully nothing happened and I, I lived to tell the story. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> that sounds scary. Like just thinking <laughs> about all the possible things that could have gone wrong. Um, what is a typical day for you in your current line of work? So my day is quite varied, but obviously with COVID and the implications from it, it's changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But mainly I'm working from home now, whereas before I'd be working in the office and on site. I provide specialist knowledge on our products and services to both customers and colleagues. And I work on product specification, so for new developments. Um, I try and capture the voice of the customer to define new features. And before COVID, I would usually go on site with um, site engineers to perform testing and commissioning of our products on electrical substations. That sounds interesting and quite varied as well. Yeah, yeah, I quite enjoy it. What skills would you say is crucial when one is considering a career in engineering? I think it's important to note that there's no um, one size fits all model of engineering and we all bring different strengths to a team. So that being said, I think it's really important to have good uh, team working abilities. So being able to work well in a team, um, being able to communicate efficiently and effectively is also very important. So I remember um, my manager and my former company would tell me you have to be able to communicate what you're doing to whether it doesn't matter if you're communicating it to an engineer or to someone who doesn't necessarily have a STEM background, but you need to describe it in a way that everyone can understand. So being able to communicate effectively is a very necessary skill. And also I think problem solving is needed and analytical skills as well. That's interesting you mentioned that because I think most of the other ladies that I have um, interviewed, the one key skill that has come across is communication. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're communicating to um to stakeholders basically as well yeah. as to engineers and being able to switch different communication styles yeah um, is something that they've all mentioned mm -hmm. 
What would you say is the most challenging part of being an engineer, especially when all the statistics um, are saying that there are more males in the field than females? I think in my experience, in my working experience, I've been lucky to have very supportive, supportive colleagues. I haven't felt unsafe or anything, and I've had um, great mentors who have kind of shared their experiences with me, so I know I'm not alone. But I think something that um, we all face being women in engineering or maybe even at the start of your career when you're a young engineer is imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So you feel like maybe you're not qualified to be there or you have external factors, maybe people telling you that you can't do it or you, you shouldn't do it. And I think when when you're not very sure of yourself, that can, can have a, a very strong impact on you. Mm. So I think to counter that, it helps to speak to people and to kind of see that, that other engineers have done it. So being able to see other women in engineering and know that you're not alone and, and you can do it. It's been done before, you can do it. Yeah, that's very true. I think representation is very key mm -hmm. um, in all fields of engineering. Yeah, definitely. What would you say has been um, like maybe the most rewarding part of engineering for you in your career so far? I think for me, it's knowing that I'm doing, that my, jo my job or the work that I'm doing is going to have a positive impact on the world, like I'm making a change. So we know or that engineering factors into everything that we do or have today, whether it's the buildings we're in, the roads that we travel on, the, the phones that we have in our hands, us communicating right now remotely. It's all due to engineering. So knowing that I'm part of a larger community that's, that's making changes in the world is yeah, very rewarding to me. Great. What advice would you give to any young girl, probably in year 11 or even in A-levels, um, who is considering a career in engineering? Um, honestly, I would say just just go for it. As, as simple as that. If it's something that you know that you want to do and that you'll enjoy, then I would say just go for it. Because um, I remember I met um, I met someone last year who, who had a daughter who wanted to do engineering, but he discouraged her from it. So when we were speaking and I told him that I was an engineer, he was quite shocked. And I think that that's usually the, the common um, reaction when I say I'm an engineer, it's like, oh, surprise and shock but um i think if if she didn't have the external factors telling her that she can't do it then we would have had another engineer and, and more representation so don't i would say don't try and, and fit yourself into a box of what um society or people tell you a, a woman's job is if you want to be an engineer and you know that's what you want to do, then just go for it. It's okay to to stand out. It's okay to be different. So yeah, just go for it. Okay, so your message there, go for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what do you see into the future of engineering when it comes to technology as well as sustainability? Um, you can either do talk about it in general terms Mm -hmm. or specifically to your area of engineering? Uh, I think there are endless possibilities and we're already seeing advancements in technology now. So in my field in particular, historically, the electrical grid has mainly been one directional. So from generation to the consumers, that's it. And we've mainly used fossil fuels, which as we know, are not great for the environment. But now with the Paris Agreement and with governments, countries and companies trying to move towards a more zero carbon future, we've seen new technologies, for example, 
electrical vehicles yeah. and the uptake of more distributed energy resources so whether that's uh, solar or wind mm -hmm. and the grid as it is unidirectional it can't cope with it mm -hmm. so we've seen technologies like um, battery storage for example and different methods of voltage control at various points of the grid mm -hmm. so yes we're already seeing it and i think there's a lot more to come power demands and supply mm -hmm. across the world <laughs> across the world um, yeah. it keeps going high and there's always what's the new thing we can do and i think that technology is actually moving really fast when you compare mm -hmm. it to other industries yeah um in the field yeah definitely and as the yeah populations are growing and there's more demand on the grid so yeah there's definitely going to be a lot more technology and people installing um solar panels yeah on, in their houses as well and that means power is going in the opposite direction so yeah we definitely have to do something to to cope with everything going on on oh, yep yeah um, so I know you've mentioned this briefly earlier on, but um, so far in your career, have you had support that you feel like has kept you grounded and inspired um, to still pursue electrical engineering? Yes, I have. So thankfully I have very supportive um, family and friends. But in, in terms of engineering, I've been very fortunate enough to meet wonderful engineers like Vonna, who you spoke to earlier. She's been amazing. And being able to see her and all that she's achieved has been a, a source of inspiration. So knowing that someone's done it, I can see that someone's done it and I can do it as well. And I've also been fortunate enough to work with great engineers, um, women in engineering as well. So. I can't stress it enough, representation is so important. Being able to see people and speak to people who have, who kind of know the challenges that you face, who can relate mm. to the challenges that you face and can give you advice and can mentor you is so important. So I've been very fortunate in that respect. That's good. That's really good because I feel generally support mentoring is key um, when one needs to be progressing um, an engineering career, especially when we know some of the statistics um, involved when it comes to engineering. So this is my last question to you, call it a fun question. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do outside of engineering that most people will be quite surprised to find an engineer involved? Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, I, I like to try out a lot of new things, but again, with, with COVID, um, um, I've had to put some of those things on hold. Um, I quite like dancing, okay. so salsa and bachata. Um, kickboxing is something I quite enjoy as well, kickboxing and Muay Thai. And most recently, I decided to learn how to skateboard. So it's something that I always wanted to do as a child, but never got to do so. I decided to try it now and I have to say that's been the most difficult thing I've tried to do. It looks easy when all the professionals are doing it, but it's really not. Mm. And once you fall, it can take quite um, a hit on your confidence. So it, it requires a lot of bravery, resilience and, and strength. And when I have that courage again, I'll get back into it. <laughs> but um, other than that, I do I do CrossFit, which is a strength and conditioning workout. So that's what I've been doing mostly. Okay. Um, that skating is hard. It's At so least hard. when I see them do those <laughs> moves, twist, turns, I'm like, this is not for me. No. This is not for me. Uh uh. Nope. No. But there, it's a great community though. Everyone's really lovely but it's just very, very difficult. Hmm. Like throwing yourself off of ramps with, and you're on a board with four wheels. Yeah, it's, it's it very look, hard. It, it is hard, it looks nice, but yeah. I'm just thinking of myself <laughs> on the board. <laughs> that is gonna be hard, <laughs> that is going to be hard. Yeah. 
So Elizabeth, this brings us to the end of this engineering conversation. Um, it's been great talking to you, sharing your engineering experiences, also inspiring the next upcoming generation um, in the field of engineering. And we want to say thank you for your time and for sharing with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it and I hope that this can inspire someone to become an engineer if, if that's what they want and if that's what they'll enjoy yes just go for it thank you